In this video, I'm going to be replacing this giant hot water tank, putting in a brand new giant hot water tank. I think it's this full of dirt, and I've only got a little bit of hot water available, so it's only six years old, but it's time to get replaced. Boy, let's get at it. So switching out your hot water tank is not a very difficult process, but it is a little involved because you're dealing with two systems in your house, your water and your electrics. So what I'm going to suggest is that you turn off the electricity to the heater, maybe an hour or so before you want to get started, buy yourself one of these testers. And this will tell you just by touching the wire. So that's live power. It goes green when there's no power being sensed. Beeps and makes a red when there is. You can turn those breakers off for me. Uh -huh. There's two breakers. They're both labeled 20s. Uh -huh. So it's number two and number three on the top right. Two 20s on the top right. There we go. This time the panel is actually labeled correctly. It's the only thing in the house. And you can double check. It might accidentally go off just by contact. All right, be patient. There we go. We're good to go. Now the power's off. The next thing you want to do is turn off the water to the house. Now, if you're in the country, it's easy. Just after the pump and the water purification system, there'll be an inline shutoff valve. You turn that off, open up the sink in the, at the lowest part of the house, open up the sink in the top of the house, and then you're going to want to drain your tank. And that's a simple process. Just got to open up your shutoff relief valve down here. Now, in our case, we may or may not get any water coming out. <laughs> I think it's because this thing is totally full of sediment. Um, our water pur purification and water softener system here is ancient. I, I don't think it's even working. So this is why this is only a few years old and it's already done. And <laughs> I think we're just going to cut the water supply lines and then move on. By the way, we're going to cut this bad boy in half at the end of the video just to take a look inside. I'm really curious to see how much sediment and what kind of condition this is because this is from 2013. It's not that old in the world of hot water tanks. I'm going to learn a lot about what's going on with the water in this house. Okay. All right. So we got the power off. You got the water off? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the taps are open upstairs? Uh -huh. Good. So all we got to do is open up the access panels where the electrics are now. And we'll take a look inside here. Lots of humidity down here, I guess. Huh? Here we go. So here's our electrics. That's our, our two our 12 2 wire coming in. We'll disengage that. All right. That's one power supply. And here's the other one. Now these are wired very similar to like baseboard heaters or other electric elements. It's just a black and white and they're both live. Okay. So that is not a neutral. This is live power and that one's live power when the electrics are on. And you'll see this up here. These wires come to this box and then it transfers from other wires down to the second. And there are two coils. The heating elements are right here. There's one here and there's one in the bottom. And these things actually have the ability to take them off and replace them because they will corrode in time and then fail on you. And then your heating system is just going to be really slow because you're going to be trying to heat this whole tank with only one coil. So now we've got the power disconnected. We're just going to take this here, pull it through and set this aside for now. Now, I'm going to throw these morettes on the old wires. Very good tip here. If you're in a very busy house and your electrical panel isn't in the same room, just because you went and turned the power off, um, especially in an older house, doesn't mean that it's going to stay off. Sometimes people will tie into the wire at another location in the basement and have something else running on it. The last thing you need <laughs> is for, let's say, your daughter's favorite hair dryer plug to stop working, and she comes down and flips that breaker back on <laughs> while you're working. So you can always tag it out or tape it or leave a sign or something. Make sure people know that you're messing around with power. Whew. So luckily for me, I'm planning on changing all of the plumbing down here. Because, <laughs> I mean, I don't know, the rubber hoses and old leaky... Uh, it's just this time I've had enough of this. We're going to upgrade the whole system while we're here. So we're going to deal with changing the hot water tank today, but we'll talk about upgrading the entire system to the new one while we're at it. So we're going to just be cutting all of these lines off of the original tank. Otherwise, you could just take your wrench and disengage. Coming off the top of the tank are these three quarter inch stems. It's very basic plumbing. 
It's a universal size and you should be able to just undo your fittings and take your old lines out. There shouldn't be any issue. If when you go to open up the relief valve for the water in the hot water tank in step number one and it doesn't work, that's okay. There's also a top relief valve, okay? A lot of times it'll come with a hose. This one does not. So this is going to be hot water and we're going to take the pressure out of the tank by opening this valve and whoa, there here we go. it comes. Now, there's no real pressure and water pressure here because we've got the taps all open, but there are a lot of lines in the ceiling here that are laying horizontal and they're gonna be full of water. So now we're kind of draining all of that back out through the top of the, the, this is the lowest thing in the room, really. When you're draining the water out of your lines, you wanna open the lowest fixture in the house. In a lot of cases, it's the bottom of the hot water tank. But in our case, we also have a laundry sink over here. I'm gonna go get that one as well, Matty. Please do before this bucket fills up. Yeah, yeah. I can just set this on the ground? Yeah. You can actually pour that down the drain. Go ahead. The idea is to try to minimize the amount of water that we're getting on ourselves here. In most cases, the, the tap down there, it's threaded for a garden hose. Mm -hmm. So you can attach a garden hose to that and then open it up and drain your old tank. Most of the time, the reason you're getting rid of an old tank is because it's gotten old and it's starting to rust out. It's a glass lined bucket. Right, and it's got an anode rod in there that just sacrifices itself to keep your t tank from rusting out, basically. Mm -hmm. But when the rod's gone, the tank goes. So one of the ways that you can actually extend the life of your tank, if it's not in a really bad environment like this, is changing the rod every few years. It's about $20. It is an awesome idea. Wow. That nut is just completely gone. <laughs> we can't change the rod on this one. <laughs> All right. I got no more noise coming from the water, so I'm going to assume, Matt, that everything is off. We're going to go for the gold here. Um, we're going to cut this line first. This is the cold water supply to the house, okay, and it's teed off to the tank. Uh -huh. So if you bring that pail over here, if there's any water left inside here, we'll know in a second. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Gotta love. Smells amazing. All right, we're not using that again, so that's out of here. Good, one down. Let's also uh, disconnect the plumbing here. This is our water supply line. So the secret here is, I know mine's nasty, but you always have cold water supply coming into the tank, and then you have the hot water leaving. Usually the shutoff valve is on the, the hot water leaving side, okay? so that if you ever want to, you can turn off the, the water from leaving the hot water tank to the rest of the house if you're doing maintenance somewhere. So they basically want to disengage. Now if it's copper, you would cut it with a copper pipe tubing cutter, something like this, and we're going to be doing that in a minute, and I'll show you. If it's CPVC, you can just use it with a, a pipe cutter. If it's PEX, you can use a pipe cutter. We even have some, some galvanized steel connections here. This is lovely. <laughs> Very DIY. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm a big fan of doing things yourself, but every once in a while, it's not a bad practice to feel free to ask questions before you go and do something you've never done before. Look at that. There we go. Look at this joint here, man. Wow, looks like it's been leaking for a while. Okay. It's such an awkward, awkward angle to stand. Awkward. It'll leak for a while. You want to just set it on the ground? Could I? Yeah. Okay. It's just going to drip for a while. Make sure you're catching the drips. Beautiful. All right. Now, one more time. We'll cut here and we'll be fully disengaged. All right. So a quick recap. Turn off your power. Turn off your water. Drain all the lines in the house. Disconnect your, your, your cold intake and then your hot water outtake. And then... Empty the tank as best you can, and then it's time to remove it. Now, the ship empty, probably weighing around 50, 60 pounds. It's not that bad. But this one is going to be in the hundreds because it's full of sediment. And so this is basically a giant rock. Nice. Yeah. Nice. These things are shipped so that uh, you use like a, tr a truck underneath, like a dolly. And the idea is, if you're in a normal place, you can just cut across this green line and lift the box off, and then you have access to your hot water tank. But we don't have enough height for that here. 
I'm just gonna open a door and have a look at it. There we go. Okay. That's nice. It's gonna come with instructions and that'll tell you to do everything I'm showing you to do. <laughs> okay. Maddie, here's our overflow line. Just keep that handy. All right. Okay. Just seems like it's gonna be awfully difficult to get it up there. Well, let's try it. Ready? Okay. That worked. Big okay. boy. All right. Wood. Oh yeah. So we disconnected. We got the new one in place. That's nice. That's standards. It's the fun part about doing these kind of things in a house like this is if I can do this in this environment, you can do it in your house too. <laughs> Let's just face it. Now these rods, Matt, they're threaded. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're threaded in from the top. Mm. This sits in the tank of water. Now in the city, you get magnesium. Mm -hmm. In the country, you want to put in aluminum because we have hard water, a lot of iron. And what this is, is it's a sacrificial lamb here. Basically what happens is the water that's coming into here is, um, it's got properties in the water that wants to corrode the tank, okay? And so you put in these rods intentionally and this attracts all the attention, mm. okay? From anything that's dangerous in your water trying to destroy the tank. Okay, so if you're living in the country, you wanna switch out your rod to the aluminum anode rod and we have to remove the old one first before we can stick this one in. And if you're in a space like this with an existing tank, they actually sell this and it's like a chain section, three different pieces, so you can feed it into the tank. We're actually brand new, so we're just gonna lean it and drive it in because it's not full of water. But uh, yeah, if you're in a really tight space and you've renovated your house around your tank, then that can be done. So let's put the braking bar on there. These are all very standard. And then what you're gonna do is instead of jarring at it, you're gonna go with just applied pressure. And I'm gonna hold this tank steady while you do it because otherwise you're just gonna end up twisting the tank in place. Okay, now the reason they call it a braking bar is because it's gonna break you in half. <laughs> is that right? No, it's breaking because there's a, the joint is in factory sealed mm. to be under pressure. And it is really tight. Yeah. You can stand way over there and push it away from your body instead of standing underneath all that metal. Look at this. We'll do a little system. I'll be your ratchet wrench. It's the least I can do. If you look at that rod, it's like nine or ten threads deep. Oh, oh, I think that's got it. Yeah, this was my new crescent wrench. It's pretty awesome. It's a square end side cutter, and then it's also wire stripper. Switch blade. It's awesome. See if I can get in there and get this. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna tilt the tank. A little bit more. Until you can pull it out through that hole, maybe? All right, there we go. Okay. Now you hold the tank. All right. Get that one in there. Yeah, on top of the wire. There you go. It's just so much more this stuff. Now, don't drop it in all the way. That's fine. We're going to put some thread sealer on there. Okay. I'm going to just grab my thread sealer and we'll put the paste on and then we'll tighten this back up. <laughs> so now we're just going to take a little bit of our plumber's paste. We're going to put it on the threads there and that way you can then install it, and tighten it up and then use the breaker bar to tighten it nice and tight. You want to get the same kind of seal that it had when it arrived. Isn't that the same thing? Kind of. Get rid of that way. Okay. Always important when you're tightening on something like this with a thread, do it by hand first. Make sure you're not cross-threaded. If you start using tools too early, you might not notice you're cross-threaded. I'll do one more. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. Yeah, you're a beast, eh? Nope. Oh. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> It's not that much effort. Um, just a note, this is the brand new tank when we're changing the rod in advance. Uh, it is easier if the tank is full of water. <laughs> Having all that weight in there actually counterbalances and it's a one-man operation. Okay. Let's make sure we're balanced off here for the camera for the reconnection. Now, 
if you have an existing tank and you were able to disconnect, the new threads on this tank will be able to connect with the existing lines. And you just tighten them right back down again. In our case, I got a little bit larger tank and our plumbing was a disaster, so we're changing everything over. So what I'm getting is a couple of shark bite ball valve quarter turn. And this will be my valve now for my hot water. And this is a great little fitting. This is the three quarter female thread that tightens on top of this and it automatically goes to half inch pecs. This Matty is awesome because you can put your pecs in this and it'll make a 90 degree turn without kinking the line. Okay, and that'll keep our water pressure up nice and high all the way to the fixtures. Eventually, we're gonna take the, the outtake, the hot side. You see how your tank has got cold and then hot? <laughs> yep, it's not a filler. Um, we'll have that go over to a manifold and then from the manifold, we'll run new lines to everything else in the house. But for now, we're just gonna tie into the existing so that we can get back up into business, all right? We're using Teflon tape as a thread lubricant and a bit of a sealer. Okay. There we go. Always add your Teflon tape in the same direction you're gonna be tightening your fittings. Very important for us to remember that the cold is on that side. You see this here is in line with this. Mm -hmm. This is the hot supply here. So it's good for us to remember this. If you're not sure, or you wanna make sure you don't forget, you could always get a black marker and just make a note on them. Here we go. So, you know, like when I'm adding a fitting, I always like to go backwards first until I feel it sitting in, and then go forward. Okay. You wanna just tighten both of those up for me real quick? Shark bite fittings are awesome. Just push and connect. Done. That's my new shutoff valve. Open and closed. Okay, and remember, you're also going to want to have the ability to take that off at some point if you ever want to do any maintenance. So I'm not as strong as you, so take it easy on the old man, right? Right. <laughs> All right. Now, huh? This is for your emergency overflow. Mm. And that just threads right in there. There we go. And they have a, a pipe that you can actually install here as well. It's threaded. And you can do an extension all the way down to the ground. <laughs> but for me, I don't care. To do that today, now. Wow, we are almost good to go. I think before we install our electrics, we'll finish connecting all of our water lines. So we're switching over. We need some PEX piping. Uh, about a lot. I think, what did I get? 100? 100 feet. This is good. Uh -huh. Now, this little trick for everybody at home, when you buy it, you can start from inside the coil. We use the same trick when we're using sandpaper on the roll for painting. Mm -hmm. Start from inside. Don't, don't start from the outside where it's stapled together. And the same concept works here. You just take what you need out of the inside of the coil, and when you're done, you can place it back inside. And it stays nice and small. As soon as you cut that plastic on the outside, it becomes this eight foot circle. <laughs> we just know how to go from there to here, right? It doesn't seem very long. There we go. And that is good for another day. You just press it in, eh? Okay, now wait one second. I want to show you this other little thing because we want that pipe to come into here. Right. So what we're going to do is we'll set this in, clips in, all right? And that goes on, it clips on, and then you can just pull this around like this and then clip that in and that gives you a 90 degree turn. Now this, um, no, a little bit over, over here. Yeah, there you go. Turn as you cut. And then that way you don't compress the pipe. Okay. If you just squeeze, sometimes, you know, they get a little old, you'll start making an oval. Gotcha. Now, <clears throat> boom. There we go, hot water supply. That's solid. <laughs> nice, huh? That's a good trick. Yeah. That would be hot water supply now. That's so handy. Now we want to do the same with the blue, only the difference is we're going a lot further away this time. We're taking 
um, the blue line over the top a couple of times. Okay. Take as much as you need. Keep it coming. That's good now. Okay. Now all we have to do is connect our water line for the cold supply. Right in here. <clears throat> Bingo. Okay, here goes everything. So now it's time to add the electrics. I'm telling you. Now if you appreciate all the crazy effort that we have to go through working on this basement, then give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. We got all the other videos from this project going to be coming at you soon. We have this lovely insulation blanket covering up the electrics. I'm going to grab my glove. Okay. There it is. Okay. We don't want to get rid of it entirely. Just want to peel it out of the way. All right. There's the one and there's the other. Okay. And you got this lovely important notice on here. Basically saying, hey, these are both live wires. <laughs> this particular clamp that I have on the wire is perfect for this scenario. This is set up for the traditional half inch, but it breaks away to three quarter. So the old one broke. What you want to do is you want to feed your wire through and then bring your clamp over your wires on the other side, which you're not going to be able to see on camera. So I'm going to demonstrate here. Okay, and you want to bring it up to this, and then you want to tighten it and create a compression to the tank, all right, so that your wire is now fixed and attached to the tank, and then you can connect the wire. So let's do this. It's going to be a little awkward. I think after all these years of making hot water tanks, they'd make this just a little bit more accessible. Mm -hmm. You have to find a hot water tank that makes this an easy process. Okay, so now just take your square end pliers. Straighten out the existing pipe wires here. It makes it a lot easier if you flatten them all out to tie them together to the new ones. Okay, so now we're going to attach red to red. That's extremely long. A lot longer than I need, that's for darn sure. And just line up the ends, and use your square pliers, twist them together. I always like to twist in advance. I've seen lots of guys add these morettes without twisting the wires together. And I'm just a little old school. I know if I twist it myself that it's not coming undone. Take the other power feed, which is red in this case, and twist it to the white one, which is also a power feed in this case. What you can tell is if you open up your panel, You'll see the black and the white from the 12-2, both going to their own 20 amp breaker. There we go. And we'll twist that one on. Okay, now, we're going to fold these wires back inside here now. Last thing to do is attach the ground, which is here. I'm going to tuck this insulation back. where it belongs. Which is easier said than done, to be honest with you. Right? Pack off the ground screw. And we'll hook that wire on there. Here we go. Set that. Take the trap door. It's got these two pins here, and that's for the like a, like, a, like a hinge. Okay. Now, if we've done this right, Matt, when you go flip that breaker, it won't blow up. Hmm. Go ahead. Pretty high risk. Nah. Piece of cake. Nothing, t nothing scary about it. A lot of power. Standing back? <laughs> go ahead. 
Ta-da! Now, this uh, is going to take a couple hours to heat up. Not a big deal. <laughs> um, we're going to just continue working on or some of the other work here in a few minutes, but before we do that, we want to cut the old tank in half. And see what the heck happened there, because that is going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. so okay, so now we've showed you how to install your hot water tank. Everything's operating functionally just fine, so now it's time to have a little bit of fun. We're going to drill some holes in this thing and find out if there's any water in it. Uh, and then we're going to cut it right open and show you what the inside looks like. Let's see if this tool will work. water in it. Now it's just going to go straight to the drain over there. The sediment chunks, eh? Like rocks in there. My god. Yeah, that's lighter. So on the bottom left of the screen, that's the plastic pipe that brings the water supply. Wow. And then that big corroded looking thing is the heating element. And if you take a good look, in the background there's a black thin rod going from left to right on a slight degree of downward. That's the original aluminum anode rod, almost completely eaten away after only six years. Wow, folks, change your anode rods every five years. That is crazy. Wow. Well, I knew it was gonna be nasty. I had no idea it was gonna be that corroded. Like I knew the elements were gonna be gone. The anode rod is only like four years old. That's insane. It's almost completely eaten away. Solid shaft of aluminum. And it's, the bottom of this is totally filled with all kinds of debris and sediment. My goodness. Oh, wow. Listen, if you like these kind of videos, make sure that you hit the like and thumbs up, ask your questions below, and click right here, and you can check out our tour through the house with our engineer, where we talk all things 1880 home and how to bring it up to speed so we can make an open concept home. We're going to bring all these videos to you real soon.